Hey everyone, David Chen here. Usually I like to use this channel to talk about TV and film and tech, but today I'm gonna to talk about something a little bit more serious and more important to me, and that is anti-Asian sentiment as a result of the coronavirus. Now I should point out up front that things are changing on an almost hourly basis, but as of me filming this video right now, the coronavirus is spreading in the United States. There are now over 125 cases in over a dozen states, and nine people have died in the US, all of them near Seattle. Now, I live in Seattle, and I'll just say it's kind of a weird and challenging time to be an Asian American living in Seattle right now, even more so than usual. There has been a rash of anti-Asian activity all around the world. From the BBC, in the UK, a Singaporean student was assaulted by four men who told him, I don't want your coronavirus in my country. From Buzzfeed, in the Netherlands, a Korean interpreter was yelled at by men who tried to punch her off her bike. And from NPR comes this upsetting story. The headline is, When Xenophobia Spreads Like a Virus, and it features reports from people from a variety of ethnicities talking about how uh, many people have been telling them to go back to China or getting away from them when they're in public. Even worse, nobody who witnesses any of these events seems to intervene to help. Racism against Asians in this country is nothing new. The idea of Asians being some kind of threatening, primitive, or filthy outside force that threatens America's way of life has been present for uh, over a century. Just Google yellow peril if you want to find more information about it. But the coronavirus has brought many of these sentiments roaring back to the surface for many Americans. And the purpose of this video is just to share my own personal experience with what's happening. And that is that it's pretty tough to do anything in public right now. In general, people in Seattle are very polite, but because of everything that's happening, uh, I do experience this kind of cognitive load I have of not wanting to be seen as ill or exhibiting any symptoms of someone who might be ill. When I go out in public, I sense people are a little bit more cautious of me than usual, or maybe they're just automatically assuming I might be sick. This mirrors experiences that many of my Asian friends have shared with me. People treat you differently in public now, uh, and that sucks. And they treat differently in really subtle ways, which is also something that's difficult because at least at this point, most of us aren't being punched off bikes or beat up in the streets. And as a result, you never know if you're just being delusional. Did that stranger step away from me and whip out their Purell because I'm an Asian American? Or are they just very fastidious? Did that person on the bus glare at me or is that just their resting bitch face? You never really know, but it's just something that's always rattling around in the back of your head. Relax, I'm not sick, I'm just a... Uh... Now, I do joke about this a little bit on Twitter, but really that's just my way of coping with the reality of the situation, which is that you feel like everything you do is being watched and assessed and that people consider you an active threat to their health. Now, I wanna make sure I point out that Asian Americans do have some level of privilege in American society, and it's not my intention to say that we have it worse than any other minority group in general. I know that other ethnic groups are subject to other forms of prejudice and bias, and the feelings I'm expressing might sound familiar to other people, I do not mean to minimize minimize your struggles at all. All I'm trying to do is highlight something that's happening to many of us at this point in time. One of the things I've been most encouraged by in recent years is media in the United States that recognizes the uniqueness of the Asian American experience. This is something I've talked a lot about on this channel and in my podcast. Movies like Crazy Rich Asians and The Farewell have shown that, in fact, Asian Americans are often torn between respecting the traditions of the place they came from versus carving out a new life in the United States. And the tragedy of it is that we encounter resistance from both sides. When we go back to the country where we came from, even though we do consider America our home, uh, we often are considered foreigners. And that's also the case in the United States as well because of the way we look. In the US being told by people that they think you have the coronavirus or they want you to go back to China or whatever, it feels like erasing your identity as an American. To other people, we're not Americans, we're just an Asian person that might pose a threat and that's a genuinely sad thought. So all that said, here's my advice for anyone who's made it this far in the video. You're watching, you care, uh, you wanna help, you wanna be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Uh, here's my advice. Number one is stay informed. Read reliable journalistic sources, see what the CDC is saying about how the virus is spreading and what you need to protect yourself against. I think with something like this, there's a really thin line between being cautious versus being paranoid, but try to be on the good side of that line as much as you can. Number two is share responsibly. Obviously don't share misinformation, but beyond that, I think the media has a big role in shaping how we think about a phenomenon like the coronavirus. One thing I've noticed a lot is news articles posting 
photos of Asian people with masks on uh, to kind of headline the articles. These images feed into the idea that this is only a phenomenon that impacts Asian people, when in fact coronavirus isn't known to have racial preferences at this point. It's coming from Italy too. Encourage news outlets to use a wide range of imagery and share the ones that do. Uh, and here I want to give a shout out to Phil Yu, aka Angry Asian Man on Twitter, uh, who had this tweet that I thought uh, was pretty indicative of the attitude we should have towards the media on this. Number three, be kind to Asian people. If you have some Asian or Asian American friends, check in on them, see how they're doing. My guess is they'll appreciate it. Uh, I know I have, I've had some friends reach out to me and see how I'm doing and uh, it's always very nice. And finally, number four, if you see something say something and what I mean by that is if you see people harassing Asian people on the bus or saying unreasonable things to Asian people in public stand up and say something put a stop to it uh, advocate for kindness and understanding uh, and you will be part of what makes this country great all right that's all I got for you today if you enjoyed this video feel free to hit like or subscribe uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one which will hopefully be a lot more fun and lighthearted than this video